Number 10. Good Mythical Morning is a comedy, variety, and talk show series created by Rhett McLaughlin and Link Neal. Their channel currently has 15.5 million subscribers. In April of 2016, Good Mythical Morning published a quirky eight-minute video titled The Glow-in-the-Dark Food Challenge, where two hosts, Mike and Alex, cooked up glow-in-the-dark food by mixing it with other edible substances such as crushed vitamin B2 and tonic water, which are known to have glow-in-the-dark properties. A week later, BuzzFeed released a two-minute video also featuring glow-in-the-dark food, but rather than preparing it, the guests taste-tested pre-made glow-in-the-dark dishes. Although the overall format of the two videos differ, the fact that BuzzFeeds appeared just one week later raised suspicion. One member of a Good Mythical Morning community page made a post discussing how they noticed BuzzFeed's videos' concepts were very similar to Good Mythical Morning. They stated this goes all the way back to the Variety Channel's original series called Will It, which was an experimental food series, where BuzzFeed later created their own called Can You Blank It? And they claimed this was the case for many more concepts. The Good Mythical Morning crew has tweeted accusations of idea theft from the media company, but did not take action due to understanding the nature of content creators sourcing and mutual copying of others' ideas on the platform. For others, however, it was a matter of BuzzFeed profiting from others' ideas without proper attribution. Number 9. Lena D Productions, also known as Lean De Dong, is a Vietnamese-American YouTube comedian, writer, and videographer with over 1 million subscribers. In 2014, she wrote and appeared in a comedy video personifying a young woman's period as an unexpected guest living with her for one week. She cleverly titled the short, If Your Period Was a Person. Sometime after, BuzzFeed's channel As Is, formerly known as Boldly, posted a video where a young woman is heckled by an annoying sibling. Their video was called If Your Period Could Talk. In this instance, aside from the premise being the same, the only real evidence that BuzzFeed may have taken inspiration from Linda Dong's video is the opening scene. In both videos, we see a young woman waking up in the morning only to find someone hiding under her sheets. The scenes are almost identical and both even have a gag where the period claims they wanted to show up early to surprise them. Fortunately for the young female producer, Lena D's video gained 10 million views, whereas As Is only racked in 3 million, most likely due to her video being published two years before. Number 8. Cut is a digital media production studio that operates a YouTube channel under the same name. Their content mainly focuses on relationships and exploring the human condition and currently has 8.5 million subscribers. Within the fourth wave of feminism on the rise and content creators rushing to create viral original content, in 2014, Cut released a video that shook YouTube. The video was titled 100 Years of Beauty. It was a real-time, time-lapse makeover video that demonstrated women's mainstream hair and makeup trends across 100 years in the United States. This video was an instant hit and went viral within days, amassing over 33 million views and sparking a new genre of beauty trend videos on YouTube. BuzzFeed was one of the channels that felt inspired by this groundbreaking video and recreated the format with their version called Women's Makeup Throughout History. Although the basic premise was the same, there were some obvious differences. Where Cut's video focused primarily on beauty trends of white women in America, BuzzFeed's video focused on beauty techniques of ancient civilizations. Cut Studios did not respond to BuzzFeed's video, but they saw more success with their production when you compare the 33 million views that they obtained versus BuzzFeed's 14 million. Number 7. The Human Experiment was a social experiment channel that created outrageous and thoughtful content exploring human psychology. The channel only has 10 published videos, and its last post was over three years ago. Before going inactive, however, they gained over 250,000 subscribers with a surprising 51 million overall channel views. In December of 2015, the Social Experiment channel posted a video where adults taste-tested human breast milk for the first time. Within a week, a video surfaced showcasing the same premise on BuzzFeed's channel called Adults Try Human Breast Milk, even with the same backdrop and color. Although the premise of the reaction videos were identical and basically just involved human breast milk being served in a glass of some sort, their reactions were entirely different. 
guests in the human experiment overwhelmingly thought the breast milk was disgusting and were repulsed by the idea of drinking milk from another human being. But in BuzzFeed's video, guests enjoyed the taste and made remarks about how humans drinking cow's milk seems a bit off and human milk is made for us, so it makes sense. No response was made by the human experiment, so there's no evidence of whether or not the producers of the channel were aware of BuzzFeed's copycat video. Number 6. Penguin Zoe, also known as Critical, also known as Charlie White, is a YouTube commentator and gaming streamer who critiques internet culture, with a current subscriber count of 3.5 million. In October of 2017, the YouTuber posted a comedic video where he sampled a 90s fictional cartoon candy bar come to life called the Reptar Bar. Along with the savory taste test, he also gave an extensive analysis of its flavor notes and unique chocolate characteristics. One week later, BuzzFeed released a video with the exact same premise where adults tried Reptar Bars for the first time. Their reaction video included vague descriptions of flavor and texture and appeared to rely heavily on the nostalgia factor of the cartoon candy bar to gain audience appeal. Known for his sarcastic tone and dry humor, Penguin Zoe responded in a more satirical way. He did post the familiar video where he accused BuzzFeed of stealing his idea, pointed out the similarities, but he also claimed their use of an intro clip resembled propaganda tactics of the Nazi party and declared that he is the only one who's allowed to eat Reptar bars on camera. His reaction made it very clear that the YouTuber was actually poking fun at other creators who were waging war on BuzzFeed at the time. But his fans still went off to BuzzFeed and dragged them in the comment section of their video. Ironically, his original video performed better than BuzzFeed, gaining 100,000 more views. Even his accusation video gained nearly 2 million views, whereas BuzzFeed's Reptar Bar video has less than 600,000. BuzzFeed content accusations do not just stop with video content, as this next creator found out. Number 5. J. Kenji Lopez Alt is an American chef, food writer, and author of James Beard Award nominated culinary column The Food Lab. In 2011, Lopez Alt published a unique halal cart style chicken and rice recipe on the website Serious Eats. Lopez Alt proudly stated that the recipe was the result of a year long, extensive sampling process of halal carts throughout New York City. Five years later, Lopez Alt discovered his recipe on BuzzFeed's foodie channel Tasty, in which he said was nearly identical with a few tweaks. He took to Twitter to expose BuzzFeed for stealing his recipe, stating that BuzzFeed obviously did not do their due diligence because a simple Google search would have shown his recipe on Serious Eats as the top result. The following day of the video's release, Lopez Alt reached out to a BuzzFeed editor. At first, the editor was very apologetic and agreed that the recipe was indeed plagiarized. However, after this, a manager from Tasty emailed Lopez Alt and claimed the fact that the recipes were similar were just a coincidence, and because they were not in the room when the recipe was written, there was no proof that it was plagiarized. That was the end of the altercation, but the world-renowned chef still continues to call out BuzzFeed on Twitter every time they steal recipes from either him or other chef colleagues. Number four. The Rose Sisters are an Australian YouTube duo of sisters Bianca and Madeline Rose, who make tutorials, challenge videos, and discussion videos. Their current subscriber count is at 14,000 subscribers. In June of 2018, following the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the sisters uploaded a video about what it's like to be a royal princess. The video was called, We Became Royal Princesses for a Day. In the 19-minute video, the sisters try following the rules and codes of conduct of the English royalty in order to become princesses for a day. Their video featured them picking outfits according to dress code, attending a horse race, and finally enjoying high tea. A few months later, BuzzFeed's female-focused channel, with over 3 million subscribers called Ladylike, uploaded a 9-minute video titled, We Follow Princess Rules for a Day with the exact same premise of transforming into princesses and following royal rules. After discovering Lady Likes video, that same week, Bianca from Rose Sisters uploaded a video where she accused BuzzFeed of stealing their content. One example Bianca pointed out is that Lady Likes girls used nearly all the same rules that appeared in Bianca and her sister's video. Other examples included shots of the girls putting on pantyhose, walking up and down stairs, drinking tea, and curtsying in front of the queen. Currently, Rose Sisters video has just over 9,000 views, but Lady Likes video racked up over 2 million. 
BuzzFeed denied these accusations, stating that the idea for the ladylike video originated from two previous BuzzFeed videos on the subject of Meghan Markle. The other sister, Madeline, attempted to reach out to BuzzFeed by email, but the media company essentially left her on read. Number 3. Sophia Nygaard is a YouTuber, writer, and comedian who started her full-time career as a BuzzFeed creator from 2015 to 2017. Despite having major success with BuzzFeed, Nygaard made the choice to leave the company due to the restrictions she felt were put on its creators. Through her time at BuzzFeed, she gathered a large following and is well known for being one of the main producers of BuzzFeed's channel, Ladylike. Since her departure from the digital media company, there are many instances where BuzzFeed has been accused of stealing video ideas from Sophia's channel. In January of 2017, during a trip to New York, Sophia visited the Bite Lip Lab, where you can create your own lipstick and other cosmetic products. Just over a month later, BuzzFeed's channel As Is uploaded a video where two producers visited the Bite Lip Lab in order to create custom makeup and nail polish. Later on in January of the same year, Sophia did a makeup video where she tested out a bronzer made by the snack brand Cheetos with a current BuzzFeed creator and her personal friend, Freddie. Fans became very suspicious when just over one month later, Ladylike released a video where women created makeup looks inspired by popular American snacks. The biggest piece of evidence for the accusation was that Freddie also appeared in the Ladylike video. In March of the same year, Sophia did a makeup challenge with a friend, who's also another ex-BuzzFeed employee, where they used hard-boiled eggs to apply foundation. And then suspiciously, one day later, Ladylike uploaded a video with the exact same concept. Sophia Nygaard herself has not publicly accused BuzzFeed of stealing her ideas and copying her videos, but her fans noticed those similarities and have taken her aside. Number 2. Jacqueline Glenn is a California-based commentator who discusses various topics such as religion, politics, and YouTube drama. Her self-titled YouTube channel currently has over 750,000 subscribers. As a means to refresh her content in 2017, Glenn created an original series in partnership with Full Screen called The Skeptic's Guide to Wellness, which was a deep dive program that explored the mystical world of alternative wellness. The first episode of Glenn's eight-part series takes a peek into the practices of magic and witches when she visited a local mystic shop to speak with experts. Less than three weeks later, BuzzFeed released a video titled We Practice Magic with a Real Witch, where two BuzzFeed hosts visited this same mystic shop that appeared in Jacqueline Glenn's series. Some fans felt that the video was more than just too similar, and one fan decided to tweet Glenn informing her of BuzzFeed's video. Outraged by this, Glenn uploaded a video accusing the digital media company of stealing her idea, stating that the fact they visited the same shop just a few weeks later was enough proof to confirm that someone at BuzzFeed was snooping around her channel. In the video, Glenn showed shot-by-shot -shot comparisons of the similarities, including the location, the reactions, and their overall analysis and conclusion. She continued to share the conversation she had with the producer of the video, Sarah Rubin from BuzzFeed, who reached out to her on Twitter to try to explain their side of the story. In short, Rubin claimed that there was just a lot of overlap. The YouTuber did not buy this explanation and asked her followers to call out BuzzFeed on Twitter and on their channel. Despite the outcry from fans, one month later, Glenn accused BuzzFeed of stealing from her again after they released a video about the power of crystal healing just six days after her own video. Following this, an official response was released by two producers from BuzzFeed, Sarah and Kelsey, in the form of a long detailed article published on Medium. They included a timeline of the planning process. It also included screenshots of correspondence internally as well as externally with the experts that were featured in their video. They claimed their video was already in the works before Jacqueline published her video. In the end, Jacqueline defended her accusation, stating it's still highly likely someone at BuzzFeed saw her video and decided to recreate it. And although she's had her own run-ins with plagiarism in the past and has since apologized, it has not changed the fact that BuzzFeed continues to deny stealing content from smaller creators, even when they've been found guilty of it before. Number 1. Akila Hughes is a New York writer and comedian who's worked for MTV, Comedy Central, and more. Her channel, Akila Obviously, currently has just over 150,000 subscribers. In January of 2015, Akila, an avid Tumblr user, uploaded a parody video titled How to Be an Introvert, According to Tumblr, Episode 1. 
where she poked fun at how introverts are exaggeratedly romanticized on Tumblr. Two years later, Hughes uploaded another video where she called out BuzzFeed for creating a video about introverts that she believed was based on her original video. BuzzFeed's video, The Perfect Weekend for an Introvert, according to Hughes, is shot for shot identical to her parody video and undoubtedly was inspired by one of the jokes that appeared in her video. She also included examples of other videos from creators that she claims BuzzFeed has stolen from and they did not give proper credit to. She went on to explain that because the media company has been found to steal ideas from smaller creators on multiple occasions, it was time for them to take accountability. This sparked Hughes to start a petition and created the hashtag Stop BuzzFeeds in order to empower creators and fans to take action against BuzzFeed to put a stop to the plagiarism. The founder of BuzzFeed, Jonah Peretti, responded to Akila Hughes' campaign, debunking her accusations by defending the company and stating that BuzzFeed's videos were either released before the videos that she mentioned or were inspired by other BuzzFeed videos. Hughes, however, did not buy his defense and continued her hashtag Stop Buzz Thieves campaign, which resulted in nearly 8,000 signatures. Thank you so much for checking out this week's top 10 on Top 10 Daily. Please let me know in the comment section if you like these types of videos. It does take me a while to write them and research, but I enjoy making them. So if you guys like them, please give a like and subscribe and also share this video. And if you have any other ideas for Top 10